In this video, you'll get an introduction to AWS Service Catalog. With this service, you can create, organize, and govern a curated catalog of AWS products that can be shared by permissions level, so end users can quickly provision approved IT resources without needing direct access to the underlying AWS services. Let's start from the perspective of an end user with a developer account. AWS Service Catalog provides a single location where organizations can centrally manage which IT services and versions are available, what is configured in each of the available service, and who gets permission access. As an end user, we can see only the products that have been shared to our account. Let's launch an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon EC2, instance of this simplified version of Linux. Products provided by an administrator can be of multiple versions and have different launch options provided. Notice that only a fraction of the entire set of parameters necessary to deploy an EC2 instance are exposed. This makes it easy and secure for end users to create EC2 instances. We need only enter a CIDR range for the IP address to connect to the instance. We can also choose a key pair and the server size. Everything else is pre-configured. Two key value tag pairs have been set by the administrator, allowing the resource to be easily categorized. We are required to choose the value for the chargeback key. The possible tag values were enumerated for us. We'll make our selection and launch the product. Provisioning can take a few minutes. The product is now provisioned. Service Catalog administrators can associate products with service actions that allow end users to execute AWS Systems Manager, SSM, run commands. In this case, the end user has several service actions available. Let's reboot the instance. While the end user does not have direct access to the AWS service that's called when provisioning a Service Catalog product, the relevant outputs can be made available. Here, the administrator has exposed the public URL of the provisioned instance. Let's visit it to make sure that the EC2 instance did indeed provision. As you can see, the URL points to an Apache web server test page. This indicates that the EC2 instance was successfully provisioned, and also that the administrator set it up to be pre-installed with Apache. Now, let's assume the role of an administrator and navigate to Service Catalog. This is an administrative view of the portfolios in our account. A portfolio can contain any number of products and be shared with end users, subject to optional constraints. Let's take a look. Here we can see that the product was available to the end user. Let's upload a new product to the portfolio. We'll upload a template file that provisions an AWS Linux Cloud development environment. A product is composed of one or more different product versions, any of which may be deployed by the end user. When providing versions, we can provide unique names and specify the differences. We can also provide pertinent support details to the end user deploying the product. Now that we've created the new product, let's refresh the view. Now we'll add this product to the same portfolio we saw from the end user's perspective. Now, both products are available to users with access to this portfolio. Now, let's specify a launch constraint for the product we just added to the portfolio. By default, end users must launch and manage products using their own IAM credentials. To limit end users' permissions to just what they require for a particular product, you can create a launch constraint, which is an IAM role that Service Catalog assumes when an end user launches that product. Note the name of this constraint, as we'll use it in just a minute when creating the launch constraint. Let's begin creating the constraint. First, we'll specify the product from the portfolio to apply the constraint to. Next, we'll select Launch as the type of constraint to apply. Finally, we'll enter the role name we noted previously and create the constraint. As you can see, both products in this portfolio now have a launch constraint applied. Under the Share tab, we can see any accounts or organizational units, OUs, we have shared this portfolio with. 
Let's share this portfolio with another OU in our organization. We'll use AWS Control Tower to do that. We'll share with the Workloads OU. In order to share the portfolio, we'll need the OU ID. Let's copy it. We'll share the portfolio with an Organization node. The node we're sharing with is an OU. Let's paste in the OU ID we copied earlier. We'll enable Tag Option Sharing and proceed. Note that any recipients must be in possession of the Portfolio ID in order to import a shared portfolio into their account. The portfolio has been successfully shared. Next, let's switch to the perspective of a member account within the OU to show how to import the portfolio. In order to import a portfolio shared with an account's OU, the account must have administrator access to Service Catalog, as well as the Portfolio ID. We have imported the portfolio. Let's refresh the view and take a quick look at it. As you can see, we have access to both products. Finally, let's visit the Service Catalog App Registry. With Service Catalog App Registry, you can create metadata repositories for provisioned Service Catalog products within an account. An App Registry application consists of associated resources and attribute groups. An application resource can be either an AWS Service Catalog provisioned product or an AWS CloudFormation stack. This App Registry application was automatically created for the Service Catalog product we provisioned earlier. Similarly, an attribute group was automatically created. The attribute group contains the JSON metadata describing the parameters used in provisioning the resource. You can use tags to assign metadata to your App Registry application. Tags can help you manage, identify, search for, and manage your applications. Here you can see the tags that were specified for the provisioned product by the end user and the administrator. You've just seen an introduction to AWS Service Catalog. You can learn more about this topic in the description and links for this video. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.